floods in some places, droughts in others, dangerously violent storms, and populations around the world uprooted and becoming climate refugees. The change has already begun. You could see it best perhaps in the Arctic, which I had the opportunity to visit last summer. Sea ice that equivalent in size to Denmark, Sweden, and Norway has literally melted away over the last 30 years. The fabled Northwest Passage that explorers in the 19th century tried again and again to find, but it wasn't there, will be open, not in 2040, as was predicted just a few short years ago, or in 2020, but they expect it to be open by 2013 or 2014, just around the corner. But you don't need to look that far away for the changes. They're clear examples within our own borders. A vast tree die-off is affecting the mountainous spine of the Rockies right now. And as climate changes, we see the effects at higher altitudes first, just as we do at northern uh, latitudes. The change in temperature opens the door to disease and pests like beetles and fungi that would, would have never survived before in colder climates. And these are attacking our wild forests across the West. And if you're a gardener, I'm sure you've seen firsthand that growing zones are moving quickly to the north every year. And in fact, the gardening map is beginning to change. With a $90 billion agriculture economy in Ohio, these shifts should give us all pause. Scientists worry that the shift in growing zones is just the start. A warming climate can leach moisture from the soil, limiting farm yields, and eventually displacing formerly rich farming country. As agriculture is stymied and vast groups of climate refugees are shifted around the globe, our security is affected. Recent reports from the defense and intelligence communities have pointed to the very real dangers to American interests that climate change will bring. Marine Corps General Anthony Zini, the former commander in chief of the US Central Command, co-authored a report recently stating that the threat of climate change was on par with the threat of the Cold War, which many of us remember as being the dominant threat throughout the 50s, 60s, 70s. Last fall, I attended a security conference that was hosted by former Senator uh, Sam Nunn, former Defense Secretary William Cohen, and General Jones, our national security advisor, where climate change was the dominant topic. Climate change presents a global challenge with vast humanitarian, environmental, and economic impacts. Energy usage and policies in transportation and electricity are at the heart of the problem, but also at the heart of the solution. This is what warrants the fundamental transformations in public policy and in the energy economy that we seek. Recently, the head of the IPCC, the UN panel, Rajenda Pachari said, if we don't act before 2012, it's too late. What we do in the next two to three years will make all the difference. The message is clear, we have to act now. The good news is that we can and that the Ohio can play a central role in the transformation. More than five years ago, NRDC's leaders recognized the leadership potential in the Midwest for this transformation. And we have since invested heavily in this region and in Ohio in particular. Why? Because Ohio is always at the center of the debate for what the direction the country is going to go in. And Ohio can lead us to a prosperous, clean energy future. This state is already demonstrating how to make the right commitments, first and foremost in energy efficiency. Energy efficiency allows you to receive the same amount of energy for less, or same amount of energy service for less energy. So you can have cold beers and warm showers for less therms. Exhaustive analysis by McKinsey and Company, which NRDC co-sponsored, has shown that the wide-scale deployment of energy efficiency is key to solving climate change without breaking the bank. Without a doubt, it's the cheapest, cleanest, and fastest way to deliver energy and solve our energy needs. As Energy Secretary Stephen Chu said recently, it's not just the low-hanging fruit on the tree, it's the fruit lying on the ground. We could just grab it, if only we will. By squeezing the waste out of our energy system, industry becomes more competitive and consumers save money. 
Ohio has enormous potential for tapping this, uh, this strategy. A recent study done by the American Council for an Energy Efficient Economy charted just how much. The study found that by adopting a host of readily available efficiency measures, and this is in our appliances, our electronics, the way we build and operate our buildings, Ohio could meet 33% of its electricity needs through cost-effective efficiency measures by 2025. That means that by 2025, you could save the equivalent of more than $3 billion in electricity bills, which is really an extraordinary amount of money. And this is the area where the state is pushing the envelope in the right direction. Last year, the state passed a groundbreaking energy law that requires your investor-owned utilities to get 22% of their electricity from energy, energy um, efficiency investments. This makes it one of the most ambitious efficiency laws in the nation. And we at NRDC, which we supported the energy law, and we're working hard to see that it's implemented by working with the Public Utilities Commission to make sure that the efficiency standards that are in law are implemented on the ground. We've also partnered with the Ohio Consumers Council to make sure that the utilities do meet these ambitious targets. And they certainly can. We've seen that in other parts of the country as well. As a result of much of this work, American Electric Power will soon be rolling out strong energy efficiency standards. Duke Energy is doing the same and actually has the opportunity to make money from energy efficiency if it demonstrates exemplary performance in meeting the targets. We're still working on first energy. But we helped craft a settlement earlier in the year that makes their compliance with the targets much more likely. Also, right now, the Strickland administration has the opportunity to adopt a state-of-the-art energy code for buildings for new homes. But the governor is getting pressure from the home builders who oppose this approach. In fact, last year, the home builder, in a home builder-dominated process, Ohio actually reduced its standards for efficient construction going in the wrong direction. NRDC is working with an extraordinary coalition of other environmental groups, consumers groups, efficiency experts, and the chemical industry to enact new building code regulations that would move the state in the right direction and enhance its credibility as an efficiency leader. The new code that we're proposing would save Ohio home buyers hundreds of dollars per year in their energy costs, reduce global warming pollution, and put Ohio manufacturers of efficient prod products back to work. But not all of the energy decisions in Ohio are as clear thinking and forward looking as they are in the efficiency area. Decisions are being made right now that could lock you into years of dirty, costly power. Decisions that will affect your pocketbook for years to come and the planet for much, much longer. Here in Cleveland, you face the possibility of going in the wrong direction. NRDC has been confronting proposed new coal-fired power plants that increase global warming pollution, depend on public subsidies, and compete unfairly against clean energy. Cleveland Public Power has publicly adopted the very great goal, actually, of creating the greenest public utility in America. It's an idea true to CPP's history and one that we support. But, that's, but they're on the verge of making that impossible because they've recently signed a 50-year contract to receive approximately half of their power from America Municipal Power's proposed new coal-fired power plant in Meigs County. Ballooning construction costs a dangerously one-sided con contract in out-of-state pollution, out-of-date pollution technology are likely to doom homeowners and businesses in this community with soaring electricity bills not to mention the soaring financial liabilities associated with this plant. And this does not even factor in the consequences of carbon pollution. The plant will belch out more than 7 million tons of CO2 into the atmosphere, hastening climate change and saddling the rate pay payer with future carbon liabilities. It's not too late to fix this, and we're certainly working on it, but it will take a significant push from the people in this room and the City Council to get CPP to look closely at how the next generation of Clevelanders are going to get their power. And coal concerns don't stop with AMP Ohio. The state has also committed significant funds and regulatory support to the proposed Bard Energy liquid coal facility in Columbiana County. 